All right, so this is lecture two for histology of the male reproductive system. And in this lecture, we're going to be covering the stages of spermatogenesis, both the physiology of each stage and then also the histological appearance of each stage as well. So spermatogenesis is the process by which sperm is produced within the seminiferous tubules. It begins shortly before puberty and then continues throughout a man's life. This is in contrast to the female reproductive system where a female begins losing oocytes uh, at birth and then continues throughout her life versus the males continuously produce sperm all the way into the elderly, which makes even elderly men able to father children. Spermatogenesis occurs in three separate phases. You have spermatogonia phase, which occurs via mitosis. Then you have the spermatocyte phase, which occurs via meiosis. And then you have the spermatid phase, also known as spermiogenesis, which is where the spermatids undergo cytodifferentiation to form spermatozoa. Here's a cross-section of a seminiferous tubule. You've seen this uh, slide before. And remember, you have the spermatogonia down here in the basal compartment, and then spermatogenesis occurs all the way towards the lumen, and then you have the final mature sperm resting within the lumen. So the spermatogonia phase, as you can see here in this section, spermatogonia are found in the basal compartment. Remember, there's that basal compartment and the adluminal compartment, which are separated by those tight junctions between the Sertoli cells. And so the spermatogonia down here in the basal compartment, they undergo mitosis to yield spermatogonia that will eventually differentiate into primary spermatocytes. As far as histological appearance, and you can really appreciate this here, they have very round heterochromatic nuclei, so you can see this here, and then also a round cytoplasm surrounding them. Again, back to this diagram. So again, you, you have these tight junctions here between the basolateral membranes of the Sertoli cells that again will separate them into the basal compartment, and then up here would be the adluminal compartment. And so the spermatogonia will reside down here in this basal compartment, and then eventually will differentiate into the primary spermatocyte, which is found here in the adluminal compartment. Spermatogonia, they're separated into three types of cells based on the appearance of their nuclei. So you have first the type A dark or AD spermatogonia. So they act as a stem cell population and they give rise to more type A dark spermatogonia or type A pale spermatogonia, as we see down here, that can continue the process of spermatogenesis. So we have an AD cell like this down here. So it can give rise to more AD cells via mitosis or it can give rise to AP cells, type A pale. So these cells, the pale cells, they are committed to differentiation to produce sperm. They also undergo mitosis, and they can produce more AP cells, or type A pale. Or they can differentiate into type B spermatogonia. All type A pale spermatogonia and all subsequent daughter cells are connected via cytoplasmic bridges. And you'll see where this is significant, where this it holds these cells together all throughout the process, and they're finally shed during the final stages of spermatogenesis. These cells are named because they have pale staining ovoid nuclei. And then the type B spermatogonia, these will differentiate into spermatocytes beyond the blood testes barrier. So all of this is, again, remember, still occurring in the basal compartment. And remember, you have these tight junctions separating them out, and then you have the add luminal compartment. So type B will then eventually differentiate, again, like we say here, beyond the blood testes barrier, which is right here, into the add luminal compartment and begin the spermatocyte phase. So these will be primary spermatocyte. So the spermatocyte phase begins again when you have the type B spermatogonia that undergo mitosis to produce two diploid daughter cells that are the primary spermatocytes. So if we draw this down here, we'll just draw one for the sake of the diagram. So you have a primary spermatocyte here. This is diploid, meaning that it is 2N4D, meaning it has 
46 chromosomes and 92 chromatids. Because remember, you copy all the genetic material during the S phase of the cell cycle when you get ready for cell division. So you can equally divide it up between the daughter cells. So these primary spermatocytes, they undergo meiosis one to yield two daughter cells that are haploid. And they are 1N, 2D, meaning they have 23 chromosomes and 46 chromatids. So you've divided these up like this. And remember, during meiosis 1, this is when crossing over occurs. In spermatogenesis, specifically in the spermatocyte phase, meiosis 1 occurs over three weeks. And then it produces, like we said, secondary spermatocytes. These secondary spermatocytes, then they undergo meiosis 2. This occurs over much quicker, literally minutes to hours. And again, this produces four haploid daughter cells. And so these are haploid, but they're 1N, 1D, meaning they have 23 chromosomes, which essentially are also 23 chromatids, because they only have one copy. Here you had 23 chromosomes, but you had two copies of everything, and versus here you have one copy of every chromosome. Because remember, to form an embryo, you need 23 chromosomes from the male and then 23 chromosomes from the female to join together during conception, and then that's what gives you the total of 46 chromosomes to form an individual. And so these are four haploid spermatids that are generated. And remember, these are also still attached via these cytoplasmic bridges. And this carries out again throughout most of spermatogenesis. So back to this diagram again, just to review here. So you have spermatogonia, they undergo mitosis, they eventually differentiate into primary spermatocytes that undergo meiosis 1 to generate secondary spermatocytes, and then those undergo meiosis 2 to generate spermatids. Then as far as the histological appearance of spermatocytes, so do that secondary spermatocytes quickly undergo meiosis 2, you're much more likely to see a primary spermatocyte on a histological section. These are located in the adluminal compartment of Sertoli cells. They have a larger cytoplasm than spermatogonia. So if you go down here, more basal, you know, it's much more dense, darker, smaller cytoplasm here, much larger in this primary spermatocyte here. And then they have a round basophilic nuclei with thread-like chromosomes. And you can really appreciate there this thready like appearance. So the final phase is where spermatids undergo cytodifferentiation in a phase called spermiogenesis. And that is, this occurs during four separate stages the Golgi phase, the cap phase, the acrosome phase, and the maturation phase. You can see the spermatid here in the green arrow. As you can see, it's very close to the lumen here. So the first phase, the Golgi phase, vesicles filled with hydrolytic enzymes will accumulate in the Golgi complex. These vesicles are PAS positive. Then the vesicles begin to coalesce to form a larger membrane, bound vesicle near the nucleus. And so you have the nucleus like this, and you're going to have all these vesicles like this, and then they're going to eventually coalesce to form a much larger vesicle adjacent to the nuclear envelope known as the acrosomal this is located in the anterior pole of the developing sperm anterior here and then you'll have centrioles that will migrate to the opposite to the posterior pole and they will initiate formation of axonemic microtubules that will go on to form the flagellum. The early spermatid histological appearance, so this is an early spermatid versus a, a later stage or more mature spermatid. On appearance, they're gonna be round and smaller than spermatocytes, and you can appreciate that here, about five of them right here within this circle, and then they'll have a heterochromatic nuclei. During the cap phase, the acrosomal vesicle will continue to enlarge, it spreads over the anterior half of the nucleus. And so it'll kind of form a little cap like this over the nucleus.
The acrosomal cap will appears to be flat and it's PAS positive. So you can see here where it's much more flattened. The nucleus condenses during this phase and then my flagellar microtubule formation continues. And you have the centrioles here and they are continuing to form the microtubules that will form the flagellum. During the acrosome phase, the spermatid reorients its position to embed in the apical membrane of Sertoli cells. This is called a tail out orientation. You can see this here, where here's the apical membrane. And then this would be the anterior pole. And you can see the anterior pole points towards the base of the Sertoli cell or the basal lamina. And then you have the flagella that points into the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. Also during the acrosome phase, the nucleus elongates as the chromatin condenses. So if you have the cell like this, you have the kind of the nucleus elongating like this and condensing. You have your acrosome cap like this. And then you're going to have this mitochondria that will accumulate in a sheath around these microtubules that are forming. So you have microtubule formation that are going to continue to form the flagellum. And then you have these mitochondria they're essentially forming a sheath around this proximal region. And this, is, this region is actually known as the middle piece. And the reason why you have a large amount of mitochondria is you need a lot of cellular energy to help power the actual, the motile function of the sperm eventually. So again, kind of later stage spermatids, the histological appearance, they have small nuclei. They're located close to the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. So you see it out here. You know, you'll never see a spermatid, you know, out here in the basal region. It's always going to be here towards the lumen. You can see it here with the green arrow. So the maturation phase, so you're going to have late elongated spermatids that will begin to shed those cytoplasmic bridges into residual bodies that are phagocytized by the Sertoli cells. So essentially they're the cleanup crew here. They help clean up all of the, these shedded uh, cytoplasmic bridges to allow for a clean release of the mature spermatids. And then the spermatozoa are released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules, but they're still functionally immature because at this stage of the spermatozoa, they can swim in circles but they have no direction. So since they have no direction, they're not able to fertilize an oocyte. What happens is these spermatozoa later develop forward motility in the ductus epididymis, which is after they've left the seminiferous tubules over the course of two to three weeks. And then they actually become capable of fertilization when they actually enter the female reproductive tract, specifically the uterus and the oviduct. So as far as the components of a mature sperm, they're comprised of a head and a tail region. So here's the head here. These are all the tail region. So the head consists of the cell body, the nucleus, and the acrosome cap. It will draw in the nucleus here, and then your acrosomal cap would be up here. The acrosomal cap contains hydrolytic enzymes that are released and they break apart the corona radiata and help penetrate through the zona pellucida to begin the acrosome reaction and complete fertilization. The tail is divided into the following regions. So you have the neck region here, which connects the head to the tail. You have the middle piece, which contains the mitochondrial sheath around the flagellum. You have the principal piece, which contains a fibrous sheath around the axoneme. And then you have an end piece that contains the axoneme within the plasma membrane, the actual tail itself, the flagellar tail itself. The histological appearance of spermatozoa, you have elongated nuclei and a flagella. So you can see that here. Here's the elongated nuclei. Here's that flagella extending out here. You can see another one here and here. These are all spermatozoa here. Sperm can survive in the male reproductive tract for several weeks. Within the female reproductive tract, sperm undergo removal of glycoconjugates from their plasma membrane, which is known as capacitation, which enables them to fertilize the oocyte. Sperm are viable in the female reproductive tract for about two to three days. All right, that closes out our second lecture of, for the male reproductive tract, where we talked about spermatogenesis.